Hi everyone, this is Kristen Hess. I'm going to use three column notes today and talk to you about finding the six trigonomic functions for theta given cosine two theta. So here's a specific question that we'll be looking at with um, specific numbers. And notice that the question talks about exact values. Um, you're given theta, you need to find the values at theta, but you're given two theta and we're also given a quadrant. So let's talk about why those things are important. First, why does it matter that it says exact values? When we talk about exact values, that means we don't want the decimals, we only want the fractions, integers, or square roots. For example, one half squared of three over two or negative two. It's not asking for the decimal approximation of the square root of three over two. It's not asking for 0.5. And so you wanna use um, these values using the unit circles, is especially helpful. Using right triangles is also helpful. The quadrant matters because it tells you whether or not the trig function is positive or negative. Specifically in quadrant one, everything is positive. In quadrant two, sine and its reciprocal is positive. Quadrant three is tangent and its reciprocal and quadrant four is cosine and its reciprocal. Uh, here's a mnemonic device. All students take calculus. All meaning in quadrant one, everything's positive. Students for quadrant two means sine and its reciprocal are positive. In quadrant three, T take for tangent, tangent and its reciprocal are positive. And in quadrant four, cosine. Um, so that is a key point to the problem we're looking at. Notice in this problem, we're looking at the fourth quadrant. And so that means only cosine and its reciprocal will be positive. Now we need to find the six trigonomic functions at theta, but we're given two theta. This is where we need to have a good understanding of trigonomic identities. So we're going to use trigonomic identities to find either cosine of theta or sine theta when we are given the two. Um, so we might look at the double angle formula, the power reducing or half angle formulas. So here is the trigonomic identity sheet and we're gonna skim through it and look for that two theta. And so notice here, we've got just a theta by itself. If we keep going down though, right here, these double angles have it and we're given a cosine of two theta. And so we need to use one of these. Now I'm gonna choose either this middle one or the bottom one because I want to find cosine of theta by itself. And I can do that by using algebra. If I have a cosine and a sine, it'll be a little harder to do that. So, Let's talk through this problem. So I'll leave this identity sheet up right here so that we can look at it. And I'm gonna show you my work that I started a few minutes ago. So I started by writing what the identity is I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use this identity of cosine of two. I'm gonna put A, this is the easier to type, is equal to cosine squared of A minus one. And the given information is cosine of 2a is equal to 1 fifth. So I'm gonna combine these two statements to say that negative 1 fifth, so since these are equal, these are equal, is equal to two cosine squared of a minus one. I'm gonna add one to both sides. So the one on the right um, becomes a zero to give me four fifths is equal to two cosine squared of a. Next, I'm gonna divide both sides by two. So if we divide by two and divide this by two, we'll get two fifths is equal to cosine squared of a. And as a reminder, if you're dividing four fifths by two, that's the same as dividing by two over one. That means you're gonna have four fifths times going to flip the bottom fraction one half, multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms to get four tenths, and then four tenths reduces to two fifths. Now we're going to take the square root of both sides, keep that square root there, don't change it to a decimal, and remember anytime you take a square root it's going to be a positive or a negative value, but this is where this diagram from before comes into play. 
And we need to note that because we are in the fourth quadrant in this problem, we're just going to have that the cosine of a is equal to two, the square root of two over the square root of five, or you could just write it as square root of two, square root of five. So now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to make a little table with all six trig functions. I need to fill those in. And we just found the cosine of a is equal to the square root of two over the square root of five. So I'm going to write that down there. And because there's a relationship between the cosine of a and over here, we've got, we can flip that because these are reciprocals. So now I'm going to draw a right triangle. So if we know, if this is our right triangle, and we know that the cosine of a is the square root of two over the square root of five, I'm gonna use this SOHCAHTOA acronym. If that's unfamiliar to you, we've got another video I'll show you later to help you with that. But the basic idea is cosine is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side. And so this top one, the square root of two is the adjacent side. This is the adjacent side, and this is my hypotenuse. So to find the missing side, we're going to take, I'm going to call the missing side x, x squared plus the square root of 2 squared equals the square root of 5 squared. And I'm going to do this algebra. So 2 squared is, square root of 2 squared is 2, square root of 5 squared is 5. Subtract 2 from both sides, you get x squared is equal to 3. Then you take the square root of that to get that x is the square root of 3. And now we can fill in the rest. So using SOHCAHTOA, we know that sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So here's my angle. Opposite side is the square root of 3 over the hypotenuse of the square root of 5. But I need to look at that diagram again. We're in the fourth, quad fourth quadrant. The only thing that's positive is cosine and secant. So that means that this is going to be a negative. And we're going to fill in the reciprocal by flipping it. And lastly, tangent is also going to be negative because we're in the fourth quadrant. Tangent isn't one listed. And tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So negative square root of 3 over the square root of 2 and the reciprocal. And that is how we find that. So those, so these are the answers that we're looking for. So in summary, um, this video helps you understand what exact value means, the role of the quadrant, and how to find the six functions for the angle when you are given twice the angle for a trig function. Also note that most of the same process can be used if you're given the angle you just skip to the end with the right triangles. Um, let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.